Hello, this is the first course dealing with the second theme in your program, Ethics in Business. Do you know what the word ethics means? Good. Ethics is a set of moral values and principles. Today, we'll see vocabulary, grammar and pronunciation related to this theme. Mrs. Ben Khalil. Hello, Mr. Ahmas. Hello, everybody. What activity have you prepared to help our learners acquire keywords related to ethics in business? Today we have prepared two activities for vocabulary and the first one is matching pictures and their synonyms. Let's start first by reading the words. We have six words. Bribery, tax evasion, money laundering, whistleblowing, child labor, and counterfeiting. To help you understand these words, which are new words for you, we have, we are going, we have suggested the series of photos. Look at the pictures, and let me try to help you a little with the pictures. The first picture, as you can see, a woman washing money, because it's dirty money. Right, the second one, you see two persons shaking hands, but in one of the hands, the other man has got some money. Good, you know now what it represents. Another picture represents two handbags. One of them is original, the other one is not. So this picture represents... Good, we'll see this later. Next picture represents children working in hard, in hard conditions. And the last picture represents people taking their money away. Let's start doing our activity. Now match the pictures you have just seen with the words which correspond to these pictures. Are you ready? Let's start correcting. Picture one represents Bribery, yes, which is the money he is giving him. Illegal payment, good. The second picture represents, yes, people taking their money and leaving, which is because they don't want to pay the taxes. This is tax evasion, good. Picture three represents a woman washing money. In fact, well, we don't wash money, but this means that this money has uh, illegal origin, so this represents, this represents, sorry, money laundering. Picture four, a woman is telling another woman or another person uh, information. This is because she has just seen or she has noticed wrong practices in her job or in her firm. So this, is, this represents whistleblowing. The next picture, with children working hard, represents child labor. And the last one, with the two bags, represents counterfeiting. Good. Now let's move to the second activity, which is classifying words in a table. The activity we have just seen, the activity we have just seen, will help you, of course, with the second activity. We will have a series of words, including the words we have just seen in the activity before. Let's study the words. Bribery, tax evasion, money laundering, false accounting, whistleblowing, child labor, counterfeiting, fighting child labor, militating in an anti-corruption association. Classify these words in the table according to whether you consider they are ethical practices or unethical practices. Right, I suppose that now we are ready for the correction. Let's start with the first part of the table, that is ethical practices. The first one, whistleblowing. Yes, it is an ethical practice. Fighting child labor, right? 
and the last one, militating in an anti-corruption association. All the rest are unethical practices. Let's read them. Bribery, tax evasion, money laundering, child labor, false accounting, and counterfeiting. That was our last activity for vocabulary, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you, Mrs. Ben Khalil. Counterfeiting, bribery, money laundering, they are all unethical practices. How can we get rid of them? We can get rid of these practices provided we act collectively. Provided? What does it mean? In fact, this is our next grammar lesson, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you. Right? Consider these examples. We will eradicate counterfeiting, but only if consumers stop buying fake products. What does this sentence express? Choose the right answer. Does it express a concession, B condition, or C time? Right. It expresses condition. Now look at the second example and compare it. We will eradicate counterfeiting, provided that consumers stop buying fake products. What do you notice? Right. It was the same sentence, but this time we replaced the word provided that by providing that and as long as. So, look again at the sentence below. We will eradicate counterfeiting, providing we act now. Providing we act now, we will eradicate counterfeiting. What do you notice? Yes, providing can come in the beginning of the sentence or in the middle between the two clauses. Now focus on the underlined verbs. Which tense is used after providing? Good, the present simple. And which tense is used in the other clause? Right, the future. Now let's fill in the blanks to get the sentence structure. Provided plus subject plus the blank then we have the subject of the second clause plus the blank. Of course, we can say provided that or remove the that. Well, we can suppress it. So we can use provided, providing, or as long as in the same way. Let's correct. Provided that, providing that, as long as, are followed by the subject and the verb in the present simple, right? Then we have the second clause, the subject, and the verb in the future. Good. We can also say subject and verb in the future. And then the link words provided that, providing that, as long as, followed by the subject and the verb in the present. Right? Okay, let's practice now. Give the correct form of the verbs in brackets. Let's start by reading the sentences first. Sentence one. Corruption in the world to decrease, provided that all countries to be involved in the fight. Second sentence. As long as governments to pass more stringent laws, they to eradicate child labor. Let's correct. Corruption in the world will decrease, provided that all countries are involved in the fight. Good. Second sentence. As long as the government pass more stringent laws, sorry, they will eradicate child labor. All right. Now let's move to the second activity. Combine the pairs of sentences together. Using the link words given, make the necessary changes. Sentence 1. A. Money laundering will be reduced. B. 
banks will inform the authorities about any large cash deficit with providing that. Second sentence, companies will reduce the prices of their brands. B, people will stop buying counterfeit products with as long as. Are you ready for the correction? Okay, let's start. First one, providing that banks inform the authorities about any large cash deficit, money laundering will be reduced. Of course, we can start with money laundering will be reduced, providing that banks inform the authorities about any large cash deficit. Right, second sentence. People will stop buying counterfeit products as long as companies reduce the prices of their brands. And we can also say, as long as companies reduce the prices of their brands, people will stop buying counterfeit products. Here, you notice that the sentences we gave you were in the future, the tenses were in the future, and you transform the verb that comes after the, ta after the link word into the present. Right, well done. That was our last grammar activity, Mr. Dahmas. Wonderful. Everything is clear now. I wish these lessons would help uh, you, would help our learners to get ready for the back exam. Did you hear Mr. Dahmas? He has just expressed a wish. In fact, this is our next grammar lesson. Okay, let's start reading the dialogue between Melissa and Jeannie. I can grant you three wishes. Great, I want... Stop! Not all the, in the future. I grant you a wish about the past, one about the present, and only one about the future. Start with the past wish. All right. I bought fake sports shoes, and I regretted it because they gave me an eczema. I wish I hadn't bought them. Granted. Your present wish now. I'm a lazy girl. I wish I were a hard-working pupil. Also granted. What about your future wish now? I want to become a doctor. I wish you would fulfill my dream. I wish I could pass my baccalaureate exam with distinction. Now, focus on the three wishes made by Melissa. Pay attention to the words which are underlined. And let's complete the rules now with the tenses used in each wish. The first wish is a past wish. So it starts with I wish plus the subject plus the blank you are going to fill with the tense of the wish. The second wish is a present wish. It starts with I wish, then the subject and the blanks that you have to fill with the right tense. Notice now that for the future wish, we have two possibilities. The first one, which starts with I wish, then the first person singular and plural, I and we, then complete the sentence. And B, I wish, with the other pronouns, he, she, it, you, and they, and you complete with the, rest, with the tense of the verb. Right, let's correct now. Let's start with the first wish, the past one. Which tense do we use to express a past wish? Right, the past perfect, that is, had, and the past participle. The second wish, which is the present wish, right, it's the present wish, but the tense we use is the past simple, good. Here notice that when the verb to be is used, we always say where, never was. And the last wish, the future wish, the first one, A, with subject I and we, right, we use could and the verb in the infinitive without to, that is the stem. And the second one with the pronouns you, he, she, it, and they, we use the model you would and the verb in the infinitive without to, which is the conditional tense. Right, let's practice now. 
First, Mrs. Bahmas is going to read a situation for you to help you do the activity. Listen carefully, please. Nazim, Nazim owns a fast food restaurant. He sold rotten meat, which caused food poisoning. His restaurant has been closed by the authorities, and he is in front of the judge now. He regrets what he did and wishes things to be different or to change in the future. Right? Now complete each sentence and use the right tense, of course. Let's start with the first one. Nazim sold rotten meat and regretted it. Here, he expresses a past wish, so he says, I wish I rotten meat. Second sentence, he wishes his restaurant to be open. He expresses a present wish. So he says, I wish my restaurant. Third one, he has written a letter expressing the desire to be forgiven by the victims. He expresses a future wish. So he says, I wish the victims soon and he also wishes to regain the customer's confidence. He also expresses a future wish and he says, I wish I... Right? I think now you are ready for us to correct the activity. Let's start. The first one, I wish I had not sold rotten meat. Good. The second one, I wish my restaurant were open, right? Sentence three, I wish the victims would forgive me soon. Good. And the last one, I wish I could regain the customer's confidence. Our grammar lesson is finished, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you, Mrs. Ben Khalil. The third part of our lesson today deals with pronunciation. What is in the program? Today we are going to study stressed syllables. Right? Are you ready? Listen carefully to Mr. Dahmas reading this series of words. And mark the stressed syllable. Labor. Protect. Moral. Agree. Practice. Loyal. Right, let's correct now. Which words are stressed on the first syllable? Yes, labor, moral, practice, and loyal. And the other words are stressed on the second syllable, that is, the words protect and agree. Why is that? This is because the first words are adjectives like moral and loyal and nouns like labor and practice. And the two other ones are verbs. So what can we say? Now complete the two sentences to get the rule. Most Two-syllable verbs are stressed on the. Most two-syllable nouns and adjectives are stressed on the. Okay, let's correct them. Most two-syllable verbs are stressed on the second syllable. Good. And most two-syllable nouns and adjectives are stressed on the first syllable. Right. Any advice to the pupils, Mr. Dahmas? Yes, my Mrs. Ben Khalil. You have certainly noticed that when given the rule, Mrs. Ben Khalil insisted on the word most and not all. This means that there are exceptions. If we take the first rule, two syllable verbs, uh, two, you may have two syllable verbs stressed on the first syllable and not on the second, like open finish, bother, etc. You may find two-syllable nouns stressed on the second syllable, like machine, 
Japan. As you may have uh, two syllable adjectives stressed on the second syllable and not on the first one, like mature and correct. So, the only piece of advice I can give you is to check in the dictionary every single word you see for the first time. Mrs. Ben Khalil, do we have anything to say or to add about uh, stressed syllables? Of course, there are many other things we are going to study now. Listen to these series of words carefully. Ethics, corruption, evasion, economically, technological, Right, let's correct now. Look at the sentences carefully. Which syllable is stressed? As you can see, it is in bold type. Right? In ethics, it's the first syllable. In corruption, it's the second one. In evasion, it's the second one again. And in the last word, it's on the no, which is the one before the last. What? Conclusion can we draw? Right? Complete the sentence now to get this, the structure or the rule. Right? Words ending in ik, ix, ikal, ikali are stressed on the syllable before, which is the one before the last. Let's read now the last series of words to get another rule. Listen carefully. Privacy. Honesty. Philosophy. Original. Technology. How do these words end? Yes, good. They end with C, T, F, L, and G. Which syllable is stressed in these words? Listen again. Privacy. As you can see, the stress is in bold type. The stress syllable is in bold type. Privacy. Honesty. Philosophy. Original. Technology. What conclusion can we draw? Right? Complete the sentence to get the structure or to get the rule, sorry. Yes, words ending in C, T, F, L, and G are stressed two syllables before the sounds. That is, two syllables before the end. All right, is it clear? Let's move to the activity now, to the practice. Mr. Dahmas is going to read a series of words Classify them in the table according to their stressed syllable, whether it is the first, second, third, or fourth syllable. Listen carefully. Conclusion. Responsibility. Direct. Imitation. Practical. Honest. Unethical. Product. Produce. Economical. Thank you, Mr. Dahmas. Let's correct. Before we classify the words in the table, let's first identify the stressed syllable. Let's start with the first word. Conclusion. Right? Second one. Responsibility. It's the B, the verb to direct. Imitation. Right? Practical, honest, unethical, product, produce, the verb, economical. Right? Now, we have to count before we put these words in the table. Which syllable is it in each word? The first one. First syllable, 
practical, honest, and product. On the second syllable, we have the word conclusion, direct, and ethical, produce. The words that are stressed on the third syllable are imitation, economical. And the word, we have only one, which is stressed on the fourth syllable is responsibility. Good. We hope that we have been of little help to you. That's all for today, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you very much. No That's all for today. Uh, next time, we'll go on dealing with ethics in business. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye. Goodbye.